Hey guys, it's Marty from OwingsArt.com and today we're going to take a look at the long requested uh, Holbein Artist Watercolors. I get tons of requests to review these all the time and I'm finally getting to them and very excited uh, to take a look at them today with you. Uh, the company Holbein is uh, based in Japan, um, but they're named after Hans Holbein the Younger. Now he had a father who was the elder and they were both artists. But Hans Holbein's a German artist and regarded as one of the best portrait artists of the 16th century. I'll put a link in the description, but if you get a chance, go learn a little bit about Hans Holbein, who was just a, a spectacular portrait artist. Um, the gear I'll use today is, of course, these watercolors. I'll use a 6x12, 140-pound fluid watercolor paper you see here. I'll also use a couple of Pentel water pens, a medium and a fine and I'll use this very excellent French-made Isabay No. 5 mop brush. Um, here's what we're going to look at today. I'll, t I'll do some color swatches and we'll look at each of the colors individually. I'll demonstrate some mixing and layering. I'll do a painting demo and finally I'll rate these paints based on their performance in multiple categories. So we'll run the full spectrum today and we'll check these out uh, top to bottom. Here's a little bit about the watercolors. Like I said, they're made in Japan. This is a 12 color set, but they come in 18 and 24 sets as well. And new, just introduced this year, you can get them in half pans. There's 108 colors in the line, so you're never gonna be short. Uh, great uh, selection of colors. Uh, the thing about these, and I'll use a simple paper plate here to uh, lay out my palette, um, but the thing about these watercolors that's pretty extraordinary that you you'll realize right off the bat is one the vibrancy of the paint is definitely there you can tell these are artist quality watercolors but what i found really really excellent about these was their dissolvability i mean the paints go down effortlessly you, you, there's no problem at all you can just they dissolve so nicely and basically it's because the pigments i believe are so finely ground so there's no granularity to the paint. There's no uh, like remnants or bits sitting uh, in the paint after you add a little bit of water to them and they just flow nicely right off the palette. And so here I'm just gonna do a little mixing of the paints together just so that they kind of run together in the, in the different colors here along the spectrum. And they just, like I said, they run into each other very nicely. Um, and again, the opaque paints stay opaque and the transparent paints are really exceptionally transparent. So those are some very positive things about these. And they mix very, very well. As I, I said, if you're going to mix color, um, basically this 12 tube set, and these are five milliliter tubes, you can mix tons of colors with these and basically have all the paints you need. I mean, it's fun to buy the other paints and those are great and that's great to do that. But I think if you started with this 12 color, uh, set you'd, you'd be you'd be good now you can squeeze these tubes into pans if you have some empty pans or you want to refill some other types of paints or whatever and, and they'll reactivate nicely so no worries there but you can see here when I'm adding the color in here how it's just flowing um, that's what I meant by dissolvability it just it just runs nicely um, so so that's great and that's a good thing when you when it comes to watercolors um, so I think the next thing we'll do is a little bit of a comparison. Let's compare these to some other watercolors I've reviewed on the channel in the past. You can go and check those out. And I encourage you to do so, so you can get a broad range of ideas uh, in terms of watercolor paints. So the first paint I'd like to compare these to is the very excellent German-made Schmincke watercolor paints, which I reviewed back in 14, and, and uh, I still use the Schmincke primarily in my everyday uh, work, so uh, they're great. I have a little uh, pocket box that I take with me almost everywhere, and they're just wonderful paints. Um, the Germans just have a precision about the paints. I mean, you're never gonna find an inconsistency. The color is always gonna be vibrant and bright. Um, one thing that the Germans and Japanese watercolors lack that the French watercolors, and we'll take a look at Sennelier here in a minute, is really um, that extra glow. I don't know how Sennelier does it, I think with honey, but, but it's just excellent. Okay, these are some uh, White Knight Russian watercolor paints made in St. Petersburg, and you can see here, there's a similar vibrancy to the paints, although the White Knights are not quite as light fast as I'd hope they'd be, and certainly not than the Holbeins. They are um, vibrant paints as well. 
Um, speaking of vibrant paints, let's take a look at uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, radiant watercolors. Now these watercolors are called concentrated watercolors and they are not light fast at all. If you want the light fast PH Martins, uh, you go from the radiants to the hydrus and the hydrus paints are more vibrant and more light fast or equally as vibrant. Now here's the Daniel Smith. I use Daniel Smith a lot. These are very, very excellent American made watercolors and they are spectacular. I use them in my work all the time and you can get a rough idea. These are the Rembrandts. They're made in the Netherlands by the Royal Talents Company. I just reviewed them not long ago on the channel. Take a look at that review. I rated them pretty highly. You can see here there's a lot of vibrancy, although the Rembrandts weren't nearly as dissolvable as the Holbeins. Here's the Daler and Rowney Aquafine paints. Now people uh, like artists will turn their nose up at lower end like watercolors, but I really like the Daler and Rowney aquafine watercolors and I use them in all of all, well I shouldn't say all but a lot of my sketching work now here's the Sennelier and now you can see the Sennelier swatches here as I hold it up these paints just have a spectacular watercolor feel and glow to them I just love the Sennelier's and and so I think that's something maybe that the Holbein lack if I was to criticize them in any particular area these are the Lucas 1862 uh, watercolors right here, the Lucas Aquarelle, and they're also uh, excellent and I've reviewed them, but in comparison, I like the Holbein's a little bit better. So let's just take another quick look through these uh, one more time and I'll say in comparison, I really like how the Holbein's stack up against some of the really very excellent watercolor paints out there in the world today. I think they, they do a nice job um, they're very, I'd say, consistent with the colors. You don't get a lot of uh, variety in terms of if you're using the same colors, it's going to behave differently. They're just very well made. So the quality is there. Um, the color is there. The light fastness is there. Um, the consistency and dissolvability is there. Um, so, and I'll give them a final ranking at the end. But now I'd like to put them to use in a little painting demo. So here's what I did is I just did a basic sketch here and you can see I laid out um, some pieces of uh, still life fruit here and I'll just fill in the color. Now, I did use that pen sitting there and uh, didn't realize it at the, you know, I, I've got like, you know, what? I mean, 200 ink pens around here and I picked up the one that isn't uh, waterproof. So what do you do? Life gives you lemons, you, uh, <laughs> You draw pictures i guess that's the bottom line anyway i i'm mixing the colors here on the fly sort of wet on wet as it are, as it were and you can see there um they really mix and dissolve into each other nicely which is one of the hallmarks of of these pa paints that and just the bright vibrant colors uh that they um, that they have so uh, going after this watermelon, I had to mix a little bit of the color to get, you know, watermelon has this sort of pink, unique pink color to it. And so that was fun. I mixed it a couple of times until I got the right color. And I just, um, I love the way these colors just, like I said, blend and mix so easily. I think the 12 color, I, I might add like a royal blue to this color palette, maybe a few others. And if I was going to do portraiture, I would add um, some different types of paint to, to the palette. But otherwise, I just really think you get almost most of the color you need right out of the um, right out of the 12 color set. So here's the basically the finished work, and uh, you know it's it's sketchy, right? <laughs> Both uh, literally and figuratively. But, um, you know, I just wanted to put them to the use and they, they look good. I, I love the way they go down and this is 140 pound watercolor paper. You can't really soak this watercolor paper without getting a little bit of warpage, but I, I like them. They're good paint. So I think it's time to move on into the ranking or the ratings of these uh, Holbein watercolors. and Let's see how they stack up. Well, for color, you get a full 7.5, layering the same, transparency is great, 8, dispersion is far superior. Permanence 8, light fast 8, and an overall value of 7. 
They're not the cheapest watercolor out there, but they're highly, uh, like the quality is great, so it's worth every penny you'll spend on these. So at $25 for this set, I think it's a good, good value. One thing I wanna say, a quick word about Holbein's website. It is laid out superbly. Um, easy to find uh, color uh, charts. Um, the safety data is right there, it's not hidden. Um, all the product information is right there. Here's the final rating. I'm gonna give these a full eight because they are pretty spectacular. And I'll just say again, um, they have a whole range of product. Pastels, oil paints, gouache, inks, acrylics. They even make their own papers. And like I said, I'll put a link in the description to the website, but it is spectacular. One other quick thing I wanted to mention was a quick thank you to those of you on the channel who went over and subscribed to Doug. I think he's close to 300 subscribers now. And if you haven't had a chance, go out and check out his site. He's an awesome artist, and I'm so happy that you guys responded and went over and subscribed. Thank you very much for that. And don't forget to subscribe here, share the video, and I love your comments. Keep them coming, everybody. And don't forget the uh, suggestions for future reviews. That's how I um, decide what I'm going to review next. All right, everybody, take care, and uh, happy Easter, by the way, if you celebrate the holiday. So long for now. This is Marty for OwingsArt.com. Have a great day. Bye-bye.